welcome those changes and it's great for our business, but there are still remain some issues that are very detrimental to our business. They've been mentioned by Ron Blunt. In fact, the taxi cab owners and the drivers are probably similar in what their needs are. Um, the DOV issue is really important. Uh, Ron Blunt mentioned it, and I can't stress how important. Probably 85% of the medallions today are operating under a DOV system where, for those of you that don't know, that's driver-owned vehicle. The driver buys the vehicle, operates the vehicle, responsible for the gas, the maintenance. It makes the driver a partner in the business and incentivizes a, a good operation of the taxi cab. Um, the new regulations prevent that. Uh, it's actually, nothing's included in it, and there's sections in the lease section which prevent us from assigning. It's changing our ability to contract with the drivers. I think the remaining issues that we've identified and we've given to Dennis Weldon what the uh, four remaining issues are, um, are, are all constitutional issues. And I think those, those issues need to be addressed. Um, and I think they're simple. DOV, the penalty system, which is uh, very oppressive. Uh, we've seen the new penalties, and I think they're, they're very oppressive, especially on larger, larger fleets. Um, they penalize larger fleets greater than they penalize the smaller fleets with Two the minutes. first, second, and third violation. In fact, I believe when you look at the penalties, there's double penalties on many of the situations which will raise it over the statutory limit of $1,000 uh, per violation. Um, the other thing is public safety concern. We have no problem with vehicles being taken off the street for public safety concern, but that should be it. If it's a threat to public safety, vehicles should come off the road, not for other reasons. Um, no ex parte communications. Um, the judge should only be able to communicate, shouldn't be able to communicate with anybody from the authority. Um, the, the regulations say only the council that's handling at that time. Doesn't prevent them from talking to Dennis, to Vince, to Bill, to anybody else. That shouldn't be allowed. Um, there are small issues, but the DOV and penalty issues, I mean, they're inherent, they need to be addressed. I yield my time to David David, you can continue. Thank you, Mr. Temple. You're right. Okay, I guess uh, Michael Henry. No, I'm not. I don't think they, you said he was speaking for Alice. Uh, uh, Mr. Friedman. Yeah, I was yielding my time to David Temple. David Temple. Okay. Mr. Temple, you're in a lot of three minutes. Yeah, we'll, I, I don't want to. I don't want to take. Dave, hold one second, please. I don't want to take up a lot of the authority's time. Um, I've already submitted our our comments to Dennis in advance, um, so you would know what those issues were. But I just want to stress how important they are, and um, the DOV. I can't continue to stress and. Again, I'll go back to Ron, how important it is to the operation of our business. It's, it's the way we operate, the way we've operated for years. It's the way it's operated in cities across the United States, Boston, New York. Uh, it's a good system. It works. There's no reason to change it. To change it affects the lives of all the tax cab medallion owners and drivers in the city of Philadelphia. And I think you need to look into that part. Thanks again. Uh, I, I was just asked uh, to mention something which I, I missed uh, when I introduced the authority staff. Jim Nye, who is our director of the Taxi and Limousine Division, is not here today because he is outside of the continental United States on the vacation, which has been planned for well over a year. Uh, I don't want anyone to think that he did, missed this meeting for any other reason. He did offer to come back. Uh, into the continental United States for this meeting, but the course was very prohibitive for him to cancel half of his vacation or part of the vacation and come back. So I just wanted everyone to know that Mr. Nye uh, he couldn't be here because of a previously scheduled vacation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next one on the list is uh, Roman Barkin.
<laughs> President Concord Limousine. Uh, my name is, uh, good morning. My name is Roman Bark, and I'm the owner of the Concord Limousine, DBA Concord Coach Taxi. And I was uh, find out that one of my uh, Russian rights authority was deleted. And uh, finally, I spoke with Mr. Milstein a couple days ago. We straight up that. And this morning, I still spoke with Dennis. He, if you have on page one on the regulation, and I hope my authority is going to be back, and I want to like a, put them in different folders, the way which are they used to be. So I just want to make sure I get him back. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Morgan had two separate sets of rights, and um, only one was in the proposed agent, and he, he recognized that. So the second set of rights has been added, and they are two separate set of rights. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Yeah. Um, okay, Mr. Uh, Temple. Oh, he sorry. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Henry. Unless, unless you want to give him. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jump around. Uh, Michael Henry. Good morning, members of the board. My name is uh, Michael Henry. I, I'm an attorney, uh, licensed to practice law in uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I submitted uh, independent comments, and I've also represented various members of the uh, industry. I, uh, was the one who uh, instituted the action that Mr. Kennedy uh, uh, mentioned. Um, like Mr. Blount, I'm somewhat concerned with the uh, the rush nature of, of these proceedings and, and the uh, fact that uh, the industry has had very little time to review uh, the final form regulations. We, we will be doing that, and uh, although Mr. Kennedy says there were significant changes made, it appears to me that most of the changes that, that were made were, were uh, were mainly of a cosmetic nature, and that uh, some of the real substantive changes, uh, including the changes that affect the clients that, I, that I've represented, uh, have not been made. Um, if these final form regulations are adopted and approved, you will be uh, signing a death warrant uh, for executive car service providers and for partial rights taxi cab companies that are currently operating. Uh, the onerous, uh, burdensome regulations that are being imposed by these uh, final form regulations will without question put those people out of business. And um, each of the board members has an independent obligation uh, to represent the interests of the public here, uh, not the interests of the taxi cab and limousine division. Uh, it seems to me that these regulations were drafted and, and composed mainly out of the taxi cab and limousine division, and they're being presented to you today simply for a rubber stamp. I don't know how many of you, because I haven't had time to review them. I don't think that any board member has had sufficient time to review these and re review the substance of them and come to an independent judgment. You're a governing board. You're a governing board that represents the interests of the public. We have regulators here. You have a division that, that, that is the regulator, but you have the obligation to control them. You were led down the garden path when, the, when uh, this uh, agency took control. You were given bad advice and the board didn't step in and exercise its, its obligation to, put, to slam the brakes on and say, wait a minute, what's going on here? Uh, I'm asking you to do that now, and particularly with regard to um, partial rights cab, just as an example, Mr. Two minutes. Mr. Taubenberger uh, uh, wrote a decision, a board order, uh, in which he was uh, talking about granting a, a waiver for executive cab. And, he made this finding a fact. If the authority were to ignore actions of these legislatively and historically distinguished types of service, parentheses, partial rights cabs, limousines, medallion cabs, that infringed upon the type of service reserved to one of the others, it would be akin to permitting a devaluation and potentially the destruction of those different types of services deemed necessary of the preservation by the General Assembly. This, com this committee believes differentiation of these services <coughs> to be in the best interest of the public. So, one of your own board members issued an order that said that these different types of service have to be recognized and preserved. Yet, are you aware, members of the board, have you re read these regulations? Are you aware that the taxi cab limousine division wants to say that partial rights taxi cab service is substantially the same as medallion taxi cab service and imposes all sorts of regulations and requirements on uh, on partial rights cabs? This, there were the same regulations and, and requirements on partial rights cabs that are on medallion Fine. cabs. So, are you going to vote to contradict your own order, Mr. Taubenberger? I mean, the the uh, you know I, I think the uh, the issue here is you, you got to take a look at, at what's going on here. You're okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, what is your name, sir? Mohammed. Right. I'm sorry. Who's who's uh, who's time are you taking? 
Mr. Henry. Who is it? T W A. T-E-K-E-L-E. Is that Muhammad? No. Sir, you didn't sign in, did you? Did you sign in? I signed in. Could you show us which is your signature here, please? Did you sign a sheet? You signed that sheet. Are you United Taxi Workers already had their. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Mohammed. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and the board. And are you? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just saw this regulation about two days ago. We posted it on the website. I don't think we have enough time to review the whole 240 pages. I'm asking the board and Mr. Chairman to delay at least a month so we can review this regulation and come up with our written comments. For right now, the, the cap lease on the drivers is not even in the, in the new regulation. If this is not in the regulation, I don't think this is regulation is, un, this is totally uncompleted. We should have some kind of a cap lease in the regulation. Number two, the car age. It's in this regulation, I'll read a little bit. They made it in five years instead of eight years. The regulation of the PPI, PUC posted it eight years old car and no restriction on the mileage. We've been getting hurt on the mileage restriction, which is 250,000 mileage, which is totally unfair to the industries. I think we should never even have a restriction on the mileage while we have a two inspection every year, twice a year. We should have only one inspection instead of two, and the car, car should leave, uh, last at least eight years instead of five years. So I'm asking the board, requesting very strongly to help the driver to take the mileage restriction out, and the five years old, instead of five, it should be eight years old. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Eight parkour, uh, yellow. Yeah. I want to respectfully concede my time back to my car, Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Just with regard to um, executive transportation, I indicated that the adoption of these final form regulations will basically, basically be a death warrant uh, for their company. Um, Executive has been operating for the last 19 years, providing an executive car service. An executive car service is a limousine uh, that charges based on, uh, it can be mileage and uh, time, but they, they charge on mileage. And uh, they have a computerized system that dispatches their, their vehicles that, that uh, uh, requires that a meter be in, in those limousines. They've been operating that way for, for 19 years. And these regulations, I don't know whether the board's aware, 